the Heritage Commission. Sorry. Calling the Weathersfield Heritage Commission meeting to order. Uh, I see on Zoom that we have Carol Bruce, Judy Keen, Betty Standish, Joe Fletcher, Julie Lemos, and Joshua Campbell Torrance. Am I missing anyone? Okay, we have a quorum. All right, so this is a very much reduced agenda. Um, we don't have a lot to talk about actually in the next month or so. So <clears throat> cultural district designation. Um, thank you everybody who made it to the meeting. Julie, I'm so sorry you couldn't make it, uh, but thank you for staying away. We appreciate it. <laughs> no problem, sorry to miss it. I'm doing much better. <laughs> That's good, I'm glad to hear it, mild case. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay, um, so uh, let's see. Can we put this in the minutes even though we're not supposed to officially announce it? Okay, <clears throat> so we had a really good meeting. We don't have official word yet um, from DECD, but hopefully that will be coming soon. If we get the designation, uh, then I will be working with Amy Bello um, to entice the governor to come and make the announcement here in Weathersfield as part of the 250th celebration of the founding of the country. Amy knows his chief of staff, who happens to be a Weathersfield resident. Uh, surprise, surprise. So might as well take advantage of those relationships. But in the meantime, there were a couple of things that came up during the meeting that I think we should follow up on. Um, and I'm gonna apologize because I can feel my throat going already. The pollen count is just horrendous and <clears throat> catches in my throat. Anyways, um, so the first one that they talked about was the historic districts. And it's the fact that we have a historic district and then there is the National Trust Registry, the State Trust Registry of Historic Properties and the National uh, Registry List. <clears throat> and Melina talked about the fact that we should really go back and overlay those districts and make sure that we, if we need to reapply and correct them. I do think it's worth having her come to one of our meetings to walk us through exactly what she's talking about because it was really fast and I was a little lost. I got some of it. I'm assuming that the, the national list is not the same as our historic list um, and it would make sense to reconcile all of those. Anybody else know more about it than what Melina talked about or can I elaborate a little more? Hi, this is Josh. I'm actually on the road, so I'm hoping my reception doesn't kick out. But I can I can help certainly be part of that when it happens. The National Historic Register we were listed on the historic district in 1971, and that 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 listing needs to be updated. Whether it, it is the Heritage Commission that would do that or the uh, the Historic District Commission would kind of be, I think, rightly it probably should be the Historic District Commission that should work with Connecticut for, for the SHPO's office to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with that, Joshua, but they weren't at the meeting, so we might as well invite Melina to one of our meetings and ask the Historic District Commission to attend as well. I think yeah, I think a, a joint meeting between the District Commission and the Heritage Commission would yep. make a lot of sense. Yeah, okay. Um, so I don't know if there's a huge rush on it. Uh, we're going into summertime, which makes it tough for people. So we might want to think about putting that on the calendar for September, uh, if that makes sense to everybody, or maybe August. Um, I think September would probably be better. I was talking to Kim earlier today and um they're having some turnover in the heritage in the historic district commission okay. so they're gonna have some new members in july so probably fall is the best time okay 
Okay. Right. By the way, everybody leaves Weathersfield in August. Right. I, well, I know that's why I said it's summertime. And so getting people to attend a meeting is really hard. So um, <clears throat> let's tentatively plan that for September. Um, it's one of those, once we, since we've made the introduction and we've kind of got these fledgling relationships, it makes sense to take advantage of them and enhance them and build on them sooner rather than later. Um, Cause you never know how that could benefit us. So, um, and then the second point that they talked about was the certified local government um, and the fact that we really should apply for that and it is worth money. I mean, it's worth money for Web Dean Steven. Amy, it's worth money for you at the Historical Society. Um, I think it could also be money for either events that we want to do or um, any particular projects. So we've talked about this for, I, I can't even remember how many years it's been on our agenda, a really long time. <laughs> but I think with this um, following up on this cultural district, it makes sense. And maybe we talk about it at the joint meeting um, in September if we haven't made any headway before then. Does that make sense? Yep. I have um, actually reached out to Mary Dunn, who is the person we coordinate with for the certified local government. Mm -hmm. And she sent me some updated documents and stuff. And I have compiled a, a whole bunch. I mean, we already have a lot in the town. We have a master plan. We have the uh, handbook. We have we have a ton of the the meat of what we need. What we don't have are the resumes of the commission members, which is one of the reasons I was talking to Kim, mm -hmm. and um, an inventory of our properties and a database or something like that. So that's the biggest missing piece right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Kim, some as that, well as, go ahead. Some, some of those inventories would actually be on the national registers list. Is it, it is basically based on the local list. So I think when she said there were missing properties, she was more talking about properties that weren't listed locally or on the national list. Um, but anyways, I, I, I do know that a bulk of the properties are listed in the National Register of Listing, which you can go and read and find online, by the way, at the National Park Service. I can send people a link if they're interested. Okay. Yeah, I would and then it said Strasbourg, but at the same time, since we named our district and outlined it, we should have, the Historic District Commission should have an inventory of those properties. It, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, I'm, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little surprised that they don't. I, I Just the first time I've heard that they don't maintain their own. I mean, it seems like they have to, though, because, I, yeah, I, I'm just shocked. Yeah, I'm, so it's, I'm it's a, And I'm going to follow up. Um, I have a very busy day tomorrow, but Thursday or Friday, Mary Dunn said she's available to talk, and I'm going to follow up with her to make sure I understand what she means. I mean, the town does have all the properties listed, like on the property cards or, you know, in a, in a database like that. Does she mean we need something totally separate? Um, we need to be able to reference them like with a flag and just pull those 200 properties or whatever there are out. You know, I'm, I, I wanna understand the detail because obviously we have a record of every property in town, it's just, how are they expecting it to be presented that we maintain a database? So but that's I, I, I think it's that. because, if I can just add, I think it's, it's unique because Weathersfield is so big. Usually towns don't have that many properties listed. Right. And, and so um, like, a, like my previous town, we had like 20 properties listed. So we maintained our own internal list and files on those properties. But if a property owner wants to be it was flagged by the town because it was on the town it was on the town's property card. But in our case, it's like it's the whole it's like almost all of old Weathersfield. It's like just such a big historic district. Right. 
And so his direct district commission should have that inventory. They would have had to have it to, to identify the district back when they first set yeah, it up. Yeah. So it's more a case yeah, of just absolutely. getting the information from the commission, which is. Although it, it all gets really tricky and I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry to be jumping in so much. So the Stevens house is in the historic district. It is actually not individually listed on the national register. Oh, okay. Okay. So, be. and, but it, it, no, not necessarily. It's, it's, um, it, there's the, the whole, there's this concept of like a whole district being on the national register, in which case not every individual house may be listed. Now the web house and the Dean house are individually listed, but they're national landmarks. So mm -hmm. they're, they're different qualification and that's a whole that landmarks is a whole nother list just to make things really confusing for everyone. <laughs> okay so yeah i think those are the things i think Dre, if you can get that information from mary dunn that would be great and i yeah. think the follow-up conversation with melina in september would also be very helpful if nothing else it's going to make us get our records in order um so that we don't have to do this guessing game and we know where the information is um, that would make it helpful. I mean, I do know that uh, the Historical Society is really good if you put in a property, they have a lot of history on some, a lot of the houses, but not every single one. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the more significant ones. So, um, so we'll wait for the, the cultural district designation and in the meantime, we can start working on the certified local government. Um, yeah. Everybody was really great at that meeting, um, and it'd be nice to get the next one done. <laughs> kind of like the checklist, you know, all our, our, our to do is. <laughs> but like I said, most of it is, um, most of it we already have. We already have documentation, so yeah. a few things we're missing. So. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that Liz Shapiro talked about was the diversity. So, uh, you know, the reality is, is that the council or the Republican, Republican and the Democratic town committees appoint the representatives, but it is something we probably should bring up um, to Fred Joya and to the mayor and just say, this is probably something we need to follow up as terms come up and think about adding some diversity. It's an issue, I think, in many, many communities um, in terms of being able to, I think because to be honest, we have been a, a, a white community for a really long time. <laughs> so, um, but we might want to think about if we know people that we think might be good additions to it. Um, Scott Wands, who is there from the Connecticut Humanities, expressed an interest uh, in serving on the commission which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. One, <laughs> because mm. uh, he would know what other towns are doing and what other funding opportunities might be out there. So um, something we might want to think about. Was there anything else that got talked about that I missed that somebody else heard? They talked about the um, 250th anniversary. Oh, America yes. 250. Yeah. And that Weathersfield is um, is being considered as the Connecticut um, place to launch that from, which is kind of a big deal. Does anybody know when it, when it is? Is it 2026? I'm sorry. Uh, gosh, uh, 76. So it'd be, uh, it'd be 26. Right. So that um, is four, four years away. That is, that is a high priority for the Webb Dean Stevens Museum uh, and something we're pursuing very aggressively to help spearhead that effort um, of, of helping to make Weathersfield the center of the celebrations and, and understanding of the 250th anniversary. And Jill, I'm assuming you also have it on your kind of agenda. 
Yes, actually, it's on our staff meeting. You know that every time we have a staff meeting. Um, yeah. And I, I have already have ideas about things to do. And uh, I did mention briefly to Josh a while ago. So once we get over our big grant for the whole ton of house, um, I'll have time to explore that a little bit. Okay. So does the other one look up? Um, America250.org, there's some information there. I mean, just from, I don't know if this would be a good idea or not, but I'll, I'll throw out a thought. Would it be appropriate for the, if we form like a town-wide task force so that we can all, you know, certainly Amy and I are committed to working together, but there's others that we would want to work with. And could we, would it make any sense? Or is the commission, is this something that the commission could kind of take on? I think one of the things you ought to do is to talk to the high school and actually all the schools and uh, partner with them. Um, yeah, no, that's true. But I think Josh raises a good point, which is, you know, do we need to form? So when Weathersfield had its anniversary, we formed there was a subcommittee that worked on the celebration, right? <clears throat> um, and it wasn't necessarily part of tourism, but it was, I guess, an ad hoc committee that tourism kind of kicked off. So the question is, you know, Josh, Josh was right. Do we bring this to town council and say, we think there should be a town, an ad hoc committee that works on this? Or is it something that Heritage Commission takes on? open to thoughts. I do think the place to start is with Scott Juan and just what, what is he thinking? Because he seems to have done quite a bit already. With humanities, but not necessarily with Weathersfield. Right? Just having conversations with Scott makes definite sense, but I, you know, I, I don't know if the right place is for the commission or town task force. I, you know, you all who've been in town longer, but I think, you know, if we if we have uh, a committee or it's a subcommittee of the Heritage Commission that, you know, starts regularly meeting, it puts some emphasis and some weight, and it makes sure it, it kind of it it helps make our table bigger, so we can put more people around the table to help out on this, and it. Hopefully, we'll avoid silos and 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 whatnot. I think the state is going to look to Weathersfield as being kind of the center, and I think it's really important that we have a unified front, so to speak, and and do this together. I think that's very good, Josh. Because last time we had we had all the scouts, we had all the schools, we had churches, and I think that for the sake of some people feeling. It's always only old Weathersfield that we need to expand yeah. it throughout the town. Mm -hmm. so do you think we're going to need a lot of go ahead, Andy. Sorry, buy-in from the um, from town government, from parks department, from physical services. So I think having a town task force is a good idea. Okay. All right. Anybody? So would that be something that, that uh, uh, something that town council would appoint? Um, so I think it's, um, Joy and I have talked about meeting with the town manager since, um, uh, to kind of talk about all the things that's going on. I think it's fine for a recommendation to come from the Heritage Commission to the town council, that we know that this is coming up and we think the town should think about putting together a, a task force to plan it. <clears throat> By the cool. time they do that, it'll probably be 2023, which means they have three years to plan it. Two and a half years, right? It'll and be we we could identify stakeholders and begin meeting uh, sooner than that. Yeah, no, I'm not disagreeing. Uh, I just, yeah, and they they may appoint quicker, but um, I think we should follow that channel since everyone seems to think it should be a townwide district, a townwide task force. So we can make great. the recommendation and then you know help jumpstart it. Awesome. So, okay. 
All right, good. Um, anything else under certified local government or cultural district? Okay. Um, CLHO conference, which is next Monday. Um, so we have um, a table set up. And Joya, do we need people to serve at the table? But I want to cover the table. Um, yeah, I, I, I was going to go first thing. Um, either Amy or Jill, somebody told me to come like around 730 or uh, to set up the table and bring the, the banner thing that we had for the uh, designation tour. Um, and I can be there in the morning. So it would be helpful to have one or two people, even if you can rotate through for a half hour or something, uh, not to tie up your whole morning. Just have a few of us to speak. I mentioned it to uh, the new town manager as well. So um, I'm not sure you know, what his schedule is, if he's gonna stop by for a little bit or. Right. Do we know if it needs to be manned the whole morning or just during like registration break time? I, I don't have clarity on that, but I was, I put together like today, actually some brochures and stuff that I could leave on the table that people can just take it, you know, the living history, the, um, uh, the broad street green, like the, the rack bars. I have a bunch of those calendars. we can give out hmm? calendars. I don't have many calendars left, so I, I can bring a few, but they'll, I won't have 200 of them. Um, you know what, though? It's the middle of it's almost the middle of the year, so not everybody's going to want one, anyways. And what are you going to do with them? Yeah, no, I mean we're we're down to like nothing, so I can bring a handful. I don't want it to look like I bring three. That's all. <laughs> yep, I got you. All right. So the living history, the restaurant brochure, the Broad Street Green. Um, I, I I think if someone's there just during the coffee and check in, and then during the lunch hour, you're probably fine. Okay. All right. Um, I, should I bring the brochure we did? Because I don't, I don't think I'm going to get a box in time for next Monday um, with the new directory map. Those are being printed right now. So, yeah. okay. Yes. That would be great. Okay. Um, so, Joya, I can probably do lunchtime. I, um, I have a meeting at 10 o'clock, which makes it really tough for me. I can be there first thing in the morning, but then I'd have to leave for my meeting, and, but I can come back for lunchtime. Okay. Just so you know. And if anybody else has got availability, just let Joya know. Okay. Um, and Chris, did you see the email I sent you with the blurb to put oh, in the Oh, no, program? I probably missed it. Sorry. I'll, okay. I'll go back and look for it. Okay. That after, yep. um, and I believe Amy Morinbello is coming to speak at lunchtime. That I have confirmed. I'm trying to remember if Fred said yes. I don't remember <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, and we it's too bad Melinda's not here. We don't know whether the shopkeepers are opening up or not, do we? Amy or Jill, have you, or Joshua, have you guys heard anything? I, I haven't heard. I, I would be surprised, um, you know, unfortunately, but I also kind of get it. I've seen the email from Melinda, but I haven't seen anyone reply to it. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of too bad. It's like a perfect opportunity. You don't even, they don't even have to be open that long. Um, but yeah, it's not always easy. Okay. All right, um, I will reach out to Melinda later on in the week and just say, is, have they heard anything? I mean, I think I sent an email and again, just like Victoria, you need permission for them to forward the email out to their listserv. And I, so I don't know whether mine went out or not. Okay. But could not have, but um, between you and I, we can follow up with her and just see if there's anybody else and then do a quick, these guys are open. Um, okay. okay. 
Anything else on the conference, Jill, Amy, Joshua? I uh, just, you know, thanks for the commission for participating in the town. I, I think it's a great opportunity for the town. I'm really curious to see how it all unfolds. It's been great working with the historical society. And I think potentially in the future, we could do more conferences in Weathersfield with this as a model. So I think, I think there's real potential there. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's kind of nice because we've got the nice ambiance, shops and restaurants, um, and the space. So good. They are, when the conference ends like around 4.30, they are going to have a cocktail reception um, upstairs in the ballroom. And, um, you know, you're all invited if you want to stop in at the end of the day. Okay. They'll have piano music. It'll be like an hour and a half. Okay. Great. All right. Any other open business or old business? Uh, the kiosk is up. Yay! <laughs> um, okay. Any new business before we get into updates from everybody? Okay. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Just thought of something. Uh, I found out QR codes. We can subscribe to a QR code. We were doing it with uh, economic development as well. And um, we can get like 50 codes that we could use for about $200 a year. So um, I I'm thinking we split it between the two. <laughs> I don't know what we do. Um, but if you guys are okay with it, I'm sure EDIC will be okay with it as well. I think we're going to subscribe to the QR codes and figure it out and, and use them as much as we can to put one on the directory map and to put one on, you know, our restaurant one already exists, but make one that we can track because that one's just a free one. We have no idea who clicks on it. Um, so. Okay. I don't know if we need a motion for to spend $200. If everybody can just shake your head, if you're okay with that. We yeah, I just want to let you know it, it might be something the EDIC does, and then we just take, a, you know, use a few. It depends on who needs what. We'll figure that out. Okay. But I'm fine with splitting it with EDIC if we need to. So yeah, I'll let you know. It's kind of all the same planning. EDIC well, it's budget. all, yeah, in the end, it's almost the same planning budget, so. <laughs> right. So, okay. All right, and nope, these are not in any alphabetical order because I keep moving them around. So Amy and Jill, you're up first. So it's getting into outdoor conservation, uh, but first we're going to have our lecture with Karina Corbin from the Peabody Essex Museum, um, Canton in Connecticut, uh, about Chinese export um, in 18th, early 19th century. So we're really looking forward to that. That's on a Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. Um, June 28th, we're having the Jovial Crew, which is the group that sings at the um, we're coming to do, hopefully, whether we're committing an outdoor concert in front of the Kini. And then uh, July, we'll get into our Kini course. Yep. Perfect. And uh, Shakespeare again. All right, that was quick. Um, Betty, you're on mute. Okay, uh, we're doing a, a nexus of history and art with the Historical Society on um, June 16th. Um, we're inviting William Bryant Logan to come speak. He's a, a arborist, uh, well known for all his books on oak trees and trees in general. And he's going to be talking in line with the Maritime Show about um, the oak tree being used in all kinds of maritime shipbuilding. Shipwrights love that material because it, the joinery was better and so on and so forth. So um, the Vikings used it. And um, so the whole history behind the oak tree and why we should keep it going because it's, a, it's a, an amazing tree for the environment. Um, 
and that's the 16th at 6.30. And we also have really quickly a, a whole summer's full worth of Sunday events for adults, uh, from portrait drawing to plein air paint outs and so on and so forth. They're really low cost, but they, since our program is basically um, uh, filled out with the youth's camp, summer camp program, we don't have a normal um, series of classes and workshops for adults. So we just are doing the Sunday events for adults. And it's a, you know, come as you want to. We'll have the list up on our website within 48 hours. Okay, good. All right. Uh, nobody's here from Shopkeepers. Uh, Judy EDIC. Okay, um, just a few things um, at the last meeting. Um, the town council liaison talked about the budget rate uh, that our mill rate has gone up 1.2%. Uh, so if you haven't already heard that. Um, there is also a lot of interest in the South Dean Highway and that committee is going to uh, get revitalized. Um, and the ARPA funds meeting will, uh, ARPA funds will, once we've heard all the um, ins and outs of it, we should be able to hear soon um, in a couple of weeks, they said, and that was the middle of May. So um, the EDIC has applied for um, several uh, grants through the eight ARPA funds. Um, the salute to best business is September 21st, and it will be at River again. So there will be indoor and outdoor dining that can be um, all in the same thing. Uh, just for those that do not know, the mayor's charity ball has been canceled because of lack of people coming. So they're going to be suggesting that people, instead of going to the mayor's ball, go to the wine and whiskey night, which is September 12th. Um, Joya has been reaching out to businesses and uh, marketing and meeting business owners, and that's a, a real plus for EDIC. So that's, a, I guess that's all that I have to offer. Yeah, I think Joya, if you can think of anything else. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. Great. Um, and, and Helga, I'm sorry, I should have noticed that Amy Woodruff and Jesse Smith joined the meeting way back when, like at five after. So <laughs> my fault. Uh, so Jesse, you're up at website and social media. Uh, yes. Um, I'm uh, working on the newsletter. It's uh, quite big this June. Uh, a good 20 something to 30 events going on. And I'm not quite finished. I got some last things in uh, some CT uh, Trails Day events going on with um, Great Meadows uh, Conservation Trust. Um, so that hopefully I'll be finished with all that, all, all, everything on the um, websites. Uh, I did want to talk about um, Business directory signed the um, the brochure um, on the website on the home page. We have several links, and uh, so we have a printable brochure and map, a shopkeeper's guide to historic village, an interactive bro eye brochure. I don't know if you guys remember that one. The eye brochure. Um, yeah, I do. It's kind of old um but i go on it and it goes nowhere so the link doesn't exist anymore the sh I'm, i think the shopkeeper's guide doesn't exist anymore um yeah. a lot of these things don't exist anymore and truthfully that's exactly the spot where i would like to put the old weathersfield directory brochure uh in order to do that uh, which I haven't done in I don't know how, how many years. Uh, I, I guess we would have to contact QSEN. Uh, I don't know who 
contact. I don't know who would know who to contact. Um, who do we ask? Do we, would Denise maybe know? I, yeah. Yes, you might. Um, I'll find out. Right. It's got to be the IT department. Don't you think, Joya? Yeah, I'm going to try between the two. <clears throat> so, Jesse, I think you're right under those things. We should probably get rid of those pages because they are outdated. Um, and under the historic Weathersfield video, we should replace, I think, this one with the one you created for the meeting last week. Yeah. Only because it's more updated. I was act I was I was actually just I was thinking because I was looking at the video. I'm wondering, would it be good if I switched out each season video to a seasonal video, or just keep it the set, just keep it one thing? That's think, way too much work. I'm yeah, gonna... and I was... <laughs> <laughs> way too and much work. What I like about that one is it kind of shows everything there is to see and do. It does um, go through the, the seasons. seasonal ones are a little are a little more limited. So okay. I think Betty's right. Save yourself some work. <laughs> okay. All right. And I think, yeah, I think that's basically. I have all. I'm pretty sure I have all the events. Um. So and I'm up to date with all that. It's just the getting it on the newsletter getting some of it, uh, the last minute stuff on the... Uh, yeah. Can you, Jesse, can you do anything on the uh, website at all? Like, could, could you create a link that maybe takes someone to the Great Elm, for example, where I know you can add maps? I can, I can do something like, like, I do have something that on the website that takes you to the Great Elm. Um, it's under the quick links on um, the homepage. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I could put a brochure, the brochure under there, um, but I'd rather have it, well, I could have it in both places, but I'd rather have it up where they have these non-working um, yeah. links. Yeah, I, I agree. I was just looking for a a quick fix and if if it becomes a problem that's all i was just thinking about an yeah, idea i can i could i could put it under quick quick links and right now i do have it on um i don't know why um some reason um when you post things through through their um through their website or their uh cms uh on the home page um it pops up on the contact us page and I don't know why but uh, so it's on the contact us page as well. Okay. Uh, I'll see if I can get an answer tomorrow of how long it might take to fix this through QSend or how, whatever we have to do and then we'll we'll go from there. I, I used to be able to email them um, and they would get back and do things pretty quickly. Now who knows they probably want nothing to do with us or, uh, you know, it's been so long, yep. they, you know, they might give a, a, a lot of trouble. Well, that's why I think the IT department, because basically this is part of the town's website or kind of a subcategory. They should also know how to do some of these things. So yep. well, I don't, I, I'm not even sure. I don't know if anyone from the town even has access to the template template of the website themselves or, or not. If they do, that'd be great. I'll find um, out. Yeah, okay. All right, so yeah, this is our busy season right now. So I'm not surprised that you have a lot of things for the newsletter. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big. Okay, great, all right. Joshua, last but not least. Okay, well, um, great to be a part of a town that has so many great things, great things going on. It's really, really exciting. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of things happening uh, in June. Uh, on Thursday, 
Uh, Tammy Denise will be presenting her Hidden Woman series. Uh, that's a program that starts at 6.30. Uh, on June 8th, we have um, uh, Ross Harper from Past Archaeological Services. We'll be talking about uh, our current exhibit um, on the 17th century archaeological finds on the museum's property. Uh, and then the, on June 15th, we have a presentation by John Mills on Prince Mortimer. Uh, as part of our Juneteenth celebration. On the 24th, we have our last, our first, last Friday uh, concert with Locomotion in the Web Barn. So get your dancing shoes on and come on down to the Web Barn. Um, so lots of great programs. Our, uh, as I mentioned before, our new exhibit, um, Underneath uh, underneath Our Feet, um, uh, Pike Log and Weathersfield is up. Um, it's about the 17th century archaeological discoveries. It, it, it's a really great exhibit. I encourage you all to come check it out. Um, and we have our pinhole vision exhibition up photos by Peter Brown. We're doing our tours, of course. And um, we're just uh, very busy. And really, um, I think what's causing lots of, uh, uh, not stress, I won't say stress, but um, as Amy knows, um, busy work. Uh, next week, we have peer reviewer, reviewers from the uh, American Alliance of Museums coming to review us as part of our reaccreditation process. I think you all got an email from me today. Uh, we'd love to have you all meet with the peer reviewers. There's two times available, next Tuesday at 4 or next Wednesday at 10 a.m., uh, pardon me, 4.30 uh, Tuesday or 10 a.m., um, so we'd love to have you guys have a chance to meet them and give them any feedback. And I think that's really about it for us at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, at least in the term, in the, in the month of June. Okay. So, thank you. Great. Okay. Great. Um, is there any other business that needs to come um, before the commission? Yes, Jill. Oh, I don't know if it's commission business, but, um, the Chamber of Commerce is doing a Make a Splash event. It's an event um, just to try to reconnect chamber members before everybody runs away for summer. We picked the nautical theme because it's at the Keeney Center in the maritime exhibit. It's still up. And our first sponsor that jumped in um, is the uh, Captain Morgan Boat Tours, and they're going to give away a boat cruise to anyone who registers to come to the event, which is free to register. $25 for a table. There's sponsorship opportunities available that we're just really looking to um, reconnect the business community before everybody goes on vacation. And what's June the date 23rd, five to seven. Thursday, the 23rd, June okay. from five to seven. Okay. Great. More information available as it comes together. All right. Hope you're um, there. Okay, is there any other business? And I guess just one other thing, chamber related, which I'll mention. Uh, oh, thank you, Julie, because I told us about the chamber. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I well, I was going to defer to Jill on that event, um, and then also the chamber. We did. We have hired a new executive director, which is Leslie Asoyan, um, and she's from town. So just wanted to mention that. What's Leslie's last name? Asoyan. Can you hear me? No, you kind of broke up. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm. Okay. We lost you again. Don't worry about it, Julie. It's E S O I N, I think. Ah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on the road now, so my 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 uh, my Bluetooth is automatically cutting me off from not doing safe driving and, and being on the Zoom. <laughs> I like okay, it. You and Joshua need to connect or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know Joshua needs to teach me how to zoom from the car. My phone doesn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So we have a meeting in June, and then... wait a minute. I have another piece of business, yeah, Chris. Ahead. I just wanted to let everybody know that the Keene Foundation has received a $300,000 grant from ARPA funds. 
from the governor. So now we have to figure out how and when and why we can uh, spend it. And it's gonna take a lot of paperwork, I know that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Is it for anything in particular? Uh, mainly, I think, well, we don't know yet what they were in, uh, intimating, but I think it's mainly for our after school programs. Yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations. That's congratulations. fantastic news. Thank you. I was shocked and surprised because we did not apply for it. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, it's one of I just want to say, Judy, can you hear, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I did get to um, attend the Wizard of Oz at, at Webb, which was one of the programs the that you guys put on, yeah. and it was phenomenal. It was. That was Cindy Lesser who did that. But one of the things we've already thought about is to get musicals at all five schools. They, there was also a musical at Highcrest Frozen, and I guess it was as good. A little shorter, but it was excellent. So yeah, those Great. type of things are what we're going to use it for, I believe. Good. That'll be great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so we have a meeting in June. We usually do not have a meeting in July. Is everyone okay with not having a meeting in July? We aren't going to have a lot of business. Um, and I think when we meet in June, we can decide whether we need to do an August one or not. Um, usually we do because things start to get, get going for the fall. So um, we'll, we'll think about that. We'll have to judge the contest. Right. Yes, we do. Thank you. Because we would have to do that in July. That could be the meeting. <laughs> what? They're due by the end of July? They're due end by June. the end of June. End of June. Do, do, we, okay. do we know if we have any submissions yet? Or can we find that um, out? Nothing's come through to me yet. OK. I'm, they have a whole I'm month, Jesse. Yeah, I'm going to still I'm going to still promote and stuff. Uh, I might. Uh, do like a small ad for it too as well. I've never done that before, so. And, and the library's gonna push it out for us um, probably this week, I think. So. Yeah, will that meeting, will the uh, June meeting be in person or remote? If, if you guys are comfortable with in person, we can do in person. Yes? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like in person. Let's plan on in person then, okay. um, unless COVID spikes again. Um, but we'll plan on in person. Helga, if you can make it, that'll be great. Otherwise, we'll throw you on a speakerphone. <laughs> okay. And then you just have to say, who's talking? Who's talking? <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to do it here at Town Hall? Yeah. Okay. And that will be the 28th. It's now the last Tuesday. Yes. Oh, okay, good. That makes it much easier. It does make it much easier, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Any other business? Hearing none, uh, motion to adjourn. I moved. Okay, great. Good to see everybody. And we will see you in a month, if not before. Maybe we'll see you at the splash event. Bye-bye. June 6th. Bye, everybody.